these two Tesla Model 3s are the same, they're the same age, but this one has done 217 and a half thousand miles. This one has done just 2,998 miles. So I can show you around this video, just differences in wear and tear, the seats, the interiors, the bodywork between a car that's done 214,000 miles more than the other one. But well, I can also tell you about the battery capacities, what they've lost in usable energy capacity, because this has obviously done very little mileage, it should have little degradation, but it is still three years old. The battery wouldn't have been cycled very much so how much would a car that's three years old but actually not been used much affect the battery compared to one that's been charged every single day this car's averaged 200 miles every single day of its life to cover its 217 odd thousand miles so that's what this video is about whilst these two cars are here let's have a look at the differences Okay, before it rains, it looks like it's about to, uh, let's have a quick run around of this car with 2,998 miles in it. It really is as new. So from the outside first, uh, in fact, I can't even see a stone chip on it. This car is in really perfect condition. It's mint clean. I can't really give you anything negative about this car. It is literally as brand new. And then, um, well, I'll show you around the other car in a minute. They can be prone to some stone chips here. So how does the other one affect it? What's it like in comparison? But there's not really much to say. It is like picking up a brand new car. So even though it's three years old, maybe it's been garage stored because it just looks like even though rubbers in here don't have anything, uh, it, it's a brand new car so that's that let's have a look at the inside of a brand new car effectively what we want to see as comparison in a minute is of course things like seats and steering wheel so tom there if you get a good image of the top of the steering wheel we can see that that is nice and matte and smooth and then coming around here it's smooth here these are heated steering wheels so whether i think the heated ones can get a bit of wrinkling in fact there's even a tiny bit there but it feels like a brand new steering wheel it feels all good some cars on 22 ones get little wrinkles here as well but this car is of course as new and then we've got the seat uh, so it looks pretty much like new wouldn't have had much time in it there's a little bit of just crease in here which is quite normal but the seat is matte like new the center console's like new the door cars are like new, there's no scratches on the switches here. So everything is as new. Let's have a look at the back seats. And guess what? Same old story. Everything is as new. So how does that compare now to the much more well-used older car? Now we call this car Miles. We've done a couple of videos about it before. Let's have a look at the condition. I think actually Miles has done quite well. We've not had it from brand new. There are a few stone chips. There's a little ding there from a stone chip. There's a stone chip there. The bonnet paint actually looks pretty original to me. We can spot pretty well if, if things have been painted. If it has been painted, it's done well. And there's enough sort of stone chips to know it probably is an original paint. The bumper, maybe it's been painted or not. It does have a little litter in the stone chips, but it's pretty good. There's not much on them really. Where Model 3s can be prone to get in some stone chipping is uh, just in here. Now, Tesla started fitting these mud flaps, which can help. And we had a little bit of paint peeling on here. And all we've actually done is just touch it in with a pen so far. We haven't done a proper paint job, but that's brought it up quite nicely. But you would want to look for a bit of stone chipping here. And then road rash down here. They are quite uh, prevalent for that. You can see this does have some stone chips here. But again, for 217,000 miles, it's actually looking pretty good. There was a sort of year batch of cars which would have a bit of paint peeling quite readily on the seal here. Um, haven't seen that recently. That's probably more like a 2019, 2020 car. Haven't really seen it on the 21 onwards. And this one actually seems to be fine. Going around it, there's a few light finger scratches here. We washed it, especially for today, it was filthy dirty. Um, and we haven't done anything to this car, like polishing it. This car is, is working for us day in, day out. So. Around the back, yes, there's a few marks um, on the bumper, but it's all pretty good, really. You do sometimes get the misalignment on here, but this is all fine. So Miles has actually done very well. We haven't refurbed the wheels yet. We've still got a list of to do, but we will do that, of course. That's no problem. But the interior, how's it worn? So this car, we know, was a taxi. Um, so it's been to work every day with people getting in and out of the car every single day. We also know that this car has only ever had one thing done by Tesla and that was a little o-ring seal on the boot strut here this is all original otherwise so the interior let's show you here with the steering wheel at this angle you can see that there is some wrinkling here there is wrinkling here and there's a bit of wrinkling on the inside of this here but actually it is 
Okay, it actually doesn't have the very common kind of wrinkles here, which you do get in 2021s. Um, it has a bit of general wrinkling all the way around, but it's still in one bit. The cover's still in one piece. It's actually not even shiny. It's okay. So we'll leave this. The steam wheels are quite easy to replace, but we're just going to leave this as it is. Have a look at this seat. 217,000 miles. We haven't uh, even cleaned this. We've got a product, which I might show you in a minute, which actually takes the kind of grease and dirt off of materials like leather, steering wheels and seats. So we might have a go a bit of that in a minute. But what I want to look at is actually the structure of the seat and the bolsters after 217,000 miles. And you know what? It is fine. <laughs> uh, when I sit in this seat, I can notice just a slight difference. So as you'd expect, as I sit in the seat, it feels just the slightest bit softer than that seat. But unless you went from one right to the other, you wouldn't know. You get in a seat and go, yeah, that feels fine. And actually the bolsters feel fine. It's just a tad softer, but, but really that is it. Center console, steering panel, everything, everything, everything is actually all fine. This doesn't even have a squeak or rattle when you drive it. It's really, really good. So no complaints on this one at all. Now as a taxi, how are the back seats though? How are they holding up? Now, you'll see a contrast here because let me cut to a clip just now where I'll show my colleague giving one of these seats a clean. So obviously the seats are a bit more shiny in this one, but Serge has now come flying out with a cleaning product to see if this shininess is actually maybe when it gets washed, someone's... Because we haven't touched this car yet. This has gone straight to work. This is the first time we've even tried to clean it. This uh, thing called a magic sponge might actually take like the oils off of this. So maybe someone's wiped these seats with a slightly oily product or it just has oils from, from people's hands or something. So with a bit of interior clean, the magic sponge, they sometimes take the oily or shiny finish off of it. It actually works really well on steering wheels as well. So actually it does look less shiny than here. So come back to this seat now. That's more shiny, isn't it, than that? Yeah, it's definitely more shiny. It's hard to catch on camera, but it means that the seats have actually, I've just said, well, they're maybe a bit worn, a bit shiny. They're coming up like new. It's all fine. So 217,000 miles as a taxi, people getting out are fine. On the, the plastic trim down here. So you can see here, as you'd expect, people's feet getting in and out, a few little scratches in the plastic. But this is all hard plastic, and basically it's done its job of protecting the car. There's a few little scratch marks in this bit of material here. Again, people getting in and out on belt buckles and things like that, but it's basically okay. This being hard plastic has done literally its job to protect it. It's obviously had carpet mats in, but the carpets underneath are fine. We haven't even vacuumed it yet, if I'm honest. Uh, a few scratches on the back here, which obviously the new car doesn't have, but it's really, really good. Uh, same on this side, basically, a repeat of that side. So it's not that much of an interesting video yet, is it? Because we're basically saying after 217,000 miles, it's not that much different. To drive, they feel exactly the same performance. They actually return the same efficiency as far as we can tell. We were going to film a head-to-head -head efficiency test, but you can see this is on different wheels and tyres. So it wouldn't be a fair comparison, but actually both seem to be the same and both completely in line. This car is still very efficient. So we did a video recently driving to Cornwall and back in a day, real world tests, real world use cases, what we do with this car. And if you've seen that video, you will see what the efficiency and real world range of this car is exactly. So they've both been battery tested. This is from the same battery test uh, from Avalu. The uh, capacity on this car, I was intrigued with this because it's come up before that, although it hasn't been used much, um, it is still ultimately three years old. So as it sat around, is that not good for batteries? Well, the Avalu state of health for this car means it's still got 99.5% of its capacity remaining. It's as good as it can be, basically. So not doing much does not seem to be particularly detrimental for these. These are the long range batteries with a 79 kilowatt hour pack, by the way, uh, gross, about 74 usable. Um, so not using it much, seems to be fine. What I wouldn't do with one of these cars is store it at very low state of charge or very high state of charge. This, I would guess, probably has been stored in the mid-range, which is ideal. So it's probably been parked in a garage during the, the, the weekdays. Maybe somebody commutes by train or something like that. I don't know, it also hasn't done much, but I would suggest it's probably been left plugged in 50%. Uh, so it's kept in the mid-range of its charge level, probably. Uh, so it still has 99.5% of its state of charge. 
we talk about real world range, I mean, I've always said from when they were new really, that these cars will tend to do about 300 miles, but actually a uh, car with this, you know, just how new this is, driven sensibly on a nice day, you could probably get 325, 330 miles out of it. Can make it do more, but you're really trying them. But I would typically say at this kind of almost new stage or new stage, about 330 miles is quite possible. Battery degradation tends to happen throughout the first 20,000 miles typically. And so you see a few percent of battery loss and then they actually tend to remain much steadier. Again, we've done other videos about the pattern of battery degradation. So there is other videos out there on our channel. Just look through, not that long ago, battery degradation graphs. The battery capacity on the 217,000 mile car is 88.5%. Pretty good, very, very good. Original pack, of course, motors, and everything. Um, so that is 11% less than this car. 11% less of its usable capacity. Now I was gonna say, well, I get, there's another video we just done, it does show this car can still do 300 miles driven nice and sensibly on a calm day. So roughly speaking, the difference between the two in capable mileage is about 30 miles potentially. It actually doesn't really feel it, you don't really notice a difference, and that's if you're stretching the battery kind of 100% to zero. Of course, this one with another 20,000 miles would have degraded a bit. So then in reality, for most cars of an average mileage, this has actually lost more like 15 miles of difference. In reality, because most cars at three years old would say 30,000 miles would probably be about 93, 95% battery health. Anyway, what I just did when, when it's why I paused the video, now we're coming back to it, is if you've uh, lost a bit, say you've lost say um, eight kilowatt hours of energy, but you do four miles per kilowatt hour, you've technically lost about 33 miles of range, which ties in exactly with what I was about to say basically. So potentially driven 100% to zero, you would have a difference of about 30 miles of range between the two in the same conditions, if it's on the same wheels and that kind of stuff. Nothing you really notice. And charging speeds, by the way, still seem to be very good in this. It has had quite a low amount of DC rapid charging. If it had a high amount, would that be detrimental to battery health? Not really, because the car over there, one we call Clint Beastwood, is our own car that's got a very high amount of DC supercharging. I've got some credits for free charging. So we absolutely supercharge that to death, and it's done lots of supercharging. And that, with 120,000 miles, has still got 90% of its battery health. There's another video about that. We did that a while ago. Uh, so there we have it, the difference between the two. Uh, well, they feel very much the same. They uh, are the same efficiency, same performance. This one doesn't go quite as far and it's got some stone chips on it on the wrinkly steering wheel. And that's about it. So that's the conclusion of the video. But what I was keen to try is <laughs> to see, <laughs> we'll leave that in because you'll all laugh. Uh, health and safety going on here, Tom. Uh, three years old, but not used much. Doesn't seem to be too detrimental on battery health at all. Uh, probably as long as it's stored in the mid range of its, of its battery state, uh, rather than leaving it dead empty or dead full charge. And that's why you have the 80% daily charging limit. Uh, so yeah, the other difference between the two, of course, money this is worth a bit more than that car what's the difference between the two um well about twenty thousand pounds i guess <laughs> something like that actually it's not even that no this is worth much uh so probably about eighteen nineteen thousand pounds in difference uh that's what two hundred and fourteen thousand miles extra on this one has cost pretty like that on oh, a couple of suspension and bushes and some more tires anyway you get the idea so I hope that's been an interesting little video. We just happen to have these two cars here of uh, the same age, but with very different mileages. So we thought we'd put that together. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next video very soon. Yeah.